Welcome to the White Spring Bunker. These halls were built to safeguard some of the most prestigious members of the United States government. Now we are all that remains. Though we are always looking for men and women capable of helping us restore what has been lost. In return, we offer this, our refuge from the world above. Please, take your time and look around. We've made great efforts to restore this place to its former glory. Welcome, member, to our little enclave. Welcome back, members. As always, I am the Operative, your designated tour guide and host here at the White Spring. We have some podcast updates before we get started today. First, we are pleased to announce that we recently joined a new community of fellow creators. We are now part of the Robots Radio Rocket Club. We will have the opportunity to introduce you to some new and exciting podcasts, while also extending our reach within the community. And we just launched our first line of Modus Files merchandise. If you are interested, you can find Modus branded apparel and even coffee mugs on Teespring, and help support the growth of our little enclave. Thanks in advance. Now, in this episode, it's not all fun and games in the new enclave. Lieutenant Colonel Valeria is faced with the Herculean task of transforming the former Vault 76ers into a fighting force to tame wild Appalachia. This also involves some of the more mundane tasks of leadership, including the dreaded weekly reports to MODIS. We will learn more about the inner workings of the new enclave, how they prepare themselves for an uncertain future, while also still dealing with the ghosts and sins of the past. White Spring Operational Terminal. Internal Duty Log. D9C64NHM. Subject. Weekly Status Report. Audio Transcription. Lieutenant Colonel Valeria. Ah, the burdens of leadership. <laughs> At least my father warned me that it wasn't going to be all field operations, cloak and dagger and all that. <clears throat> Enclave duty report, end of week. Total active field operations this week, 10. Operations complete, 2. Operations in progress, 3. Operations failed, 1. Supplemental reports have been submitted regarding operation outcomes and Operative Levi assigned to clean up failed op Indigo Kilo Ranger. Recovery of Operative Tennyson is not possible, as we expect the Super Mutants ate him. Enclave casualties over the past seven days, 1 KIA, 2 WIA, and 2 MIA. The missing personnel, Operatives Grayson and Sanders, will be declared KIA if not found within the next week. Their last report from just north of Charleston indicated significant scorched infestation. Recommended to MODIS that the area be targeted by the Koldak Muldoon for an orbital strike. Also, Operative Anderson and Captain Harris, both currently under medical observation, suffering from what the men are calling the whoopsies. As a note, remind MODIS to provide replacement bedding for the medical wing. <sighs> Logistics has once again issued a formal complaint against Major Lilith. Ugh. I'm not sure what the problem is this time, but I have scheduled a meeting with the head of logistics tomorrow. Recruitment report. We have five new recruits currently undergoing testing. At least two of them appear to be excellent choices, while the other three are marginal. If they all pass, I may take the marginals and reassign them to logistics. It may be time to get others out in the field and away from Major Lilith. Personal note. Speak to Lilith about her table manners as well. Bringing in outside food is beginning to distress the waitstaff. I've also asked Modus to lower the prices at the production facility. I know that we need currency to circulate, but until we can get a trading network up and operational in the different regions, I feel the operatives may fall short in their ability to procure the best equipment. Operatives Kelly, Lawson, and Sparks have received formal reprimands after procuring golf clubs and attire from the White Springs, and attempting to, as they put it, play a round of 18. All was going well until they reached the back nine, when Lawson sliced his drive and hit one of the White Spring sentry bots. I had to request a Saltron reinforcements from Modus to finally recover the team, as they had been pinned down in the bathrooms outside the 13th hole. I'll need to ask Modus if we can excavate the leisure wing of the bunker. Some of the personnel are getting a bit claustrophobic, as evidenced by an uptick in disciplinary issues over the past month. Lilith attempt to be helpful by organizing a friendly boxing competition, 
but after she knocked out the first three men who stepped into the ring with her, no one else decided to participate. I have given permission for off-duty personnel to utilize the facilities inside White Springs, but that access to alcohol stores was to be regulated by modus protectrons and issued only to authorized personnel. This was necessary after Operative Thomas got blind drunk and started a fight with a mannequin. Side note, the mannequin won. Our new members, despite being incredibly enthusiastic, lack the measure of discipline and training required for our mission. Before we can truly reemerge, this needs to change. I've already spoken to Modus, who offered what I feel is a very unique suggestion, one that I heartily agree with. Should our volunteer agree? Hi, I'm Fire Rider, and I'm the host of The Pixel People, a podcast dedicated to taking a close look at our favorite characters from our favorite video games. From major characters who define the course of a game's storyline, to smaller characters who you might have never noticed. Every week, we go beyond the quest line to examine a particular character's story arc and choices, and discover the real-world parallels and life lessons hidden just below the surface. I hope you'll join us. You can find the Pixel People on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and everywhere else you listen to podcasts. Sergeant Stein collapsed back on his bed, worn and tired from hours of rehabilitation in the White Spring Bunker Gymnasium. He groaned, and he thought his old drill sergeants were rough, but Dr. Harefield was a tyrant. As much as he hated it and had come to hate the good doctor, the last few weeks had gotten him back close to his fighting trim. He couldn't complain about the food, however. Lieutenant Colonel Valeri had been true to her word and somehow had gotten cheeseburgers added to the commissary. Of course, he learned not to ask where the meat came from. He stretched his aching muscles and looked around the room. He hadn't bothered to ask Modus for his old room back. Too many memories for his liking. He couldn't bear the thought of sleeping in a bed that he and Molly had shared. Stein also wasn't interested in seeing the nursery that they had picked out and managed to bring back to the bunker from the old White Spring Resort above. So he found himself in one of the old single officer's quarters. He had a bed, a dresser, desk with his own terminal, a small kitchen, and a bathroom. Stein didn't know and didn't really care who the previous occupant might have been. That enclave was dead and buried. So this was a clean slate and maybe the opportunity to make amends for past sins. Stein could hear voices in the hallway, the indistinct conversations of these new members. He didn't quite know what to make of these 76ers, as some of them still called themselves, just as much as they didn't know what to make of him. He couldn't imagine living in a vault for 25 years, although it wasn't without a sense of irony that he'd been locked away in a coma for 16 Dinosaur, Relic, Old Fart, those are just some of the names that he'd been called behind his back. Never by the colonel, though, and certainly not Lilith, once she'd seen what he could do with a bit of explosives and a machine shot. Those two? They were something else entirely. The colonel was, well, intense. She and Gray would have gotten along famously, he was sure. Same get-it-done attitude, no bullshit, and dangerous as a viper. Lilith? Well, there was something seriously screwy with her. He'd heard a couple of stories, which he didn't really believe while he was recovering in the infirmary. Stein finally met her when he stopped by the commissary, once he was back on his feet. She was off in a corner, wearing God knows what gaudy outfit and chowing down on something completely indescribable. She certainly didn't look like the monster he'd heard about. Hell, she wasn't much older than the age his daughter would have been. That was until he saw her fight. He had wheeled himself into the gym one day for his rehab, and Lilith was sparring with one of the other operatives. The fight lasted maybe 20 seconds, and they had to take the guy out on a stretcher. Stein had never seen anyone move so fast and hit quite so hard. Lilith had just looked bored like it was nothing to her. She stood waiting for her next sparring partner, but he and his friends had made a quick exit. Good for them, Stein thought, and probably the best idea any of them had in a long time. He still didn't know what to make of her. Colonel was the only person that she seemed to respect, and certainly the only one that could tell her what to do. What he did know was that she scared people. Not just a little, either. Sergeant, the colonel has requested your presence in operations. Ah, uh, it was his old buddy Modus, the charming little AI he tried to save way back when. 
He certainly was an acquired taste, but much better company than Chucklefox had ever been. Yes, 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 Modus. Tell the Colonel I'll be right there. I'm still getting used to being... well, not being horizontal anymore. Stein rolled himself off the bed as the terminal blinked off. He thought about taking a shower first, but the Colonel wasn't in the habit of waiting, and if she didn't like the smell, oh well. Slipping on his boots and grabbing his tunic from the back of a chair, he walked out into the corridor. It was still jarring to see the same uniforms, but different faces. Ghosts of the past still stalked these halls. Maybe it was his imagination or just good old brain damage from his injuries, but he could swear that he'd seen other faces, just out of the corner of his eye. Just yesterday, he thought he saw Molly walking into production, laughing. He tried to catch up, but ran straight into Captain Reynolds, that prick they brought back from Flatwoods. He had said some mighty unflattering things, and Stein might have cold-cocked him right there if the colonel hadn't shown up. Reynolds looked like he was about to start mouthing off until the colonel shut him down with just a look. Stein was already figuring that it wasn't smart to underestimate her. He'd heard rumors about what happened the night after Modus promoted her. Word was it wasn't just Lilith who made the rounds to visit the Reluctant. Yeah, I think Gray would have liked her a lot. Sergeant Stein! He turned to find an orderly, a real young one by the looks of him, jogging towards him. Yes, Private. What is it? I got an appointment with the Colonel, and you're going to make me late. Sorry, Sergeant, but Colonel left operations and is uh, now in her office. Uh, you weren't wearing your pit boy, so she sent me instead. The Sergeant looked down and realized he'd left his newly issued pit boy on his desk. He shrugged. He couldn't understand the fascination of all these new members had with those damn vault tech paperweights. Yeah, he got it that they'd all been given one in Vault 76, but it pinched. It was too heavy, and it felt like a collar around his neck. Oh, right. The Pip-Boy. I kind of left it back in my room, but fine. Lead the way. The private might have rolled his eyes just a little, but when Stein glared at him, he quickly turned and led him back down the hall. They passed several Protectrons, making their rounds. The new enclave was still very small, so most of the work was still done by bots, though the colonel had said she preferred to get as many people manning the bunker as possible. Stein thought back to the old enclave. It had been very much the same. Hell, after the first purge, they'd been less than 50. Molly had never said anything about it, but he thought she didn't agree with what they did to all those non-enclave folks when they showed up. Hell, Stein thought Eckhart was going to do the same thing when Santiago showed up with her men, except he knew he needed the manpower. It was only later that things got tense, but at first it was really like they were getting things moving again. Ah, crap, he was daydreaming again. Hard to keep out of the past when it was still all around him. They weaved their way past the production floor and over to where the colonel had set up her office. This part of the bunker was still in a bit of disrepair, but it did afford a measure of privacy. They stopped in front of a sliding metal door while the private clicked on the intercom. Uh, ma'am? Sergeant Stein is here. The door slid open and the private left to return to his duty station. Stein took off his cap, tucked it under his arm, and walked into the colonel's office. To say it was Spartan was probably an understatement. Besides a couple of filing cabinets, the room itself was bare, outside of the desk, an office chair, and two guest chairs. The walls were dominated by a large map of Appalachia, with several other smaller maps of former Enclave operational zones from before the final purge. The only bit of aesthetics was the flag that had been hung behind the desk. Stein recognized it immediately. It was one of the old Enclave flags they used to fly. A variation of the U.S. flag, it had the same stars and stripes as the original, but the large star in the middle of the 13 representing the U.S. Commonwealth was replaced with the Enclave E. And in the middle of it, sitting behind a plain wooden desk, was Lieutenant Colonel Valeria. She was leafing through a set of manila folders. Stein stood at ease, hands behind his back, as the colonel finished whatever it was she was doing. After a few minutes, she set the final folder down on her desk, making a neat little stack. Thank you for coming, Sergeant. Why don't you take a seat? Dr. Harefield tells me you're one huge pain in her ass. It certainly takes one to know one, ma'am. <laughs> the sides of the colonel's mouth raised in an almost smile, but it died before reaching her eyes. She also tells me that you've completed basic rehabilitation, and she's reluctantly cleared you for duty. That's... Now, you're cleared for duty, but the doctor's recommendation is that you be restricted to the bunker until you've completed a more advanced rehabilitation regimen. And she's also concerned about your previous brain surgeries and whether or not you are mentally fit for field duty. I recognize your disappointment. You've been cooped up here for a very, very long time. I know what that's like, and I can guess what you're thinking. 
Pardon my language, Colonel, but this is bullshit. You got kids barely out of their diapers running around this place, and... Well, I may not be a spring chicken anymore, but I'm the most experienced asset you have. You can't just tie me down here. I'll go crazy in these walls. Oh, come on, Colonel. Have a heart. You gotta let me out of here. If Appalachia is as bad as you folks and even Modus is saying, then you know I can help. Oh, we do need your help. But I'm not just going to throw an asset out into the wild. Especially in your current condition. Colonel! What the hell? My condition? You just said- You don't quite understand, Stein. Appalachia is far worse than you remember. And as far as I am concerned, you're still in recovery. Not even Dr. Harefield is sure exactly what Modus did to put you back together. And as such, I'm not sending you, nor my babes in diapers, out before I feel they are ready. And that includes you, until I feel otherwise. However, you're also the only asset I have right now that's experienced enough to help whip these members into shape. What? We've borrowed some drill sergeant gutsies from Camp McClintock, but I need a flesh and blood hard ass to get our people ready for what's coming. And until further notice, that hard ass is you. Did I just hear that right? Those are personnel files for your recruits. Yes, they are green. But Vault 76 housed the best and the brightest this country had to offer. Maybe we're not what you expected, but we're the best hope Appalachia has. And I need your help. Huh. Well, shit. Stein muttered as he looked over the folders. He remembered his own days in basic and how much he hated his drill instructors, human and otherwise. He looked up and for a split second he thought he saw Molly standing behind the colonel's chair. The image was there and gone between blinks, but it looked so real, like she was trying to tell him something. Sergeant, while I can't send you out now, I can keep you busy. And productive. Modus has already cleared out additional space for training, and you'll have full access to the gym facilities. What I need are trained and capable operatives. We can't just sit back and watch. We need to lead. Not sit back and watch. Yeah, Molly had said something about that, too. We sat back, and they all still died, he thought to himself. He looked back up at the colonel, and he had to give her credit. She was dedicated, fanatical even. That was obvious. But she wasn't stupid. And maybe, just maybe, they'd be able to do some good. You said that they were green, colonel. These kids don't look old enough to tie their own damn shoes. That's the spirit, sergeant. Oh, Christ on a stick. What the hell did I do to deserve such a burden? You survived, sergeant. You survived. Now, help us do the same. Stein put the folders down and thought about Molly. She'd kill him if he didn't at least try. As long as I get to do this my way, you won't have any complaints from me. I wouldn't have it any other way, Sergeant. I've had Modus notify the recruits already. They'll be mustered in the gym at 0530 tomorrow. Ugh. Really, Colonel? 0530? Uh. Sergeant, I do believe you've slept long enough. Don't you agree? You make a good point, Colonel. Guess that means I get to take it out on the recruits. Stein gave the Colonel a quick salute and left the office with the folders. He might even have been whistling a little tune on the way out, but Valeria couldn't be sure. Modus. Yes, Colonel. We're making the right decision, aren't we? Sergeant Stein is a survivor. We calculate that he will be extremely useful. And if we are to reclaim what has been lost, the members will need experience that only he can provide. I don't disagree. I'm only concerned about his vitality. Lilith is a handful on her own. I don't know if I can handle two psychotic personalities. Rest assured, Colonel, we can provide leverage, should it be required. I'm not even going to ask, Modus. Thank you. I'm going to finish up here and then head up to operations. I have yet another meeting with Captain Reynolds to discuss Major Lilith.
Long gone are the days where people sing about West Virginia as almost heaven. After nuclear war and disease, it's far from heaven now. Far From Heaven, a Fallout 76 story podcast, is a tale of survival, conflict and hope set in the Fallout 76 game world. Join our survivors on their journey to reach that almost heaven once more. Available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon and many other great podcasts and apps. Far From Heaven, a Fallout 76 story, available now. White Spring Operational Terminal. Internal Meeting. Logistics. E932HG0. Subject. Staff Complaints. Logistics. Regarding. Major Lilith. Attendees. Lieutenant Colonel Valeria. Field Operations Commander. Captain Guy Reynolds. Head of Enclave Logistics. Good morning, Captain. You requested this meeting. Can I assume that once again we're going to be discussing Major Lilith? Colonel, I don't know how you and Modus can expect us to continue to work under these conditions. Major Lilith has got us tied in knots between the messes we are required to clean up and the abuse she heaps on my staff. Captain, we've had this conversation before, and I've already spoken to the Major. Hell, I've even tried to keep her out in the field as much as possible, but she has to come back from time to time. And as the person in charge of logistics, you do have a responsibility to ensure that our members are properly equipped and receive replenishment. Colonel, here is just a sample of what we found over the past few days. First, we believe these are super mutant thumbs, but they've been chewed up quite a bit, so we can't be certain. They were found in the Major's uniform pockets. Second, I had to get the medical staff to attempt to identify all of... these. The best they could do was guess that they are kidneys. But we can't even tell what species they might be from. These were stuffed inside various pieces of armor. Third, this... used to be the Major's dress uniform. I can't even imagine what she did, but there are stains so ingrained in the fabric that no amount of cleaning will help. And lastly, these... well... I can't even describe in words what these are. And again, these ended up in our lap to clean up. She's not human, Colonel. This is completely unacceptable, and my staff won't stand for it. You were the logistics chief at Vault 76, weren't you, Captain? Yes, but what does that have to do with anything? And what were you doing before we found you outside Flatwoods? I was just surviving, Colonel, like the rest of the former residents of Vault 76. Oh, surviving. I suspect you were unaware that I had another team do a thorough sweep of Flatwoods after we found you and your staff. I, uh, I have no idea what you're getting at. Captain, you and I both know exactly what I'm getting at. So here's what's going to happen. You are going to give me that box, and I'm going to have our assaultrons incinerate it. Then, Thomas, Jenkins, and Leroy will report to command for reassignment. I have three new recruits just finishing up orientation who will be taking their place. Since you know our systems backwards and forwards now, you'll have plenty of time to get your new staff up to speed. I will speak to the Major again, and let her know that we spoke and smoothed things over. I will also ask her to be a bit more discreet in the future. That will be between me and her. Understand? Uh, yes. I understand. And since you and I have an understanding, I expect no more complaints from your department regarding the Major, because I know exactly what you and your staff consider a good time. And I can tell you that you have no idea what I consider fun. And as long as we continue to have an understanding, you'll never have to find out. Is that clear, Captain? Completely. Thank you, Captain. I expect you need to get ready for your new staff. Let your other men know they need to report to operations in one hour. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Captain, in case you were interested, I know her name was Sally. Goodbye. 
White Spring Operational Terminal, Active Internal Surveillance. Subject, Overall Morale Monitoring Program. Enclave Commissary. Good evening, Leroy. Heard you up for reassignment. Yeah. The captain just told us we are rotating out of field duty starting tomorrow. Getting some new recruits in to take over. Not excited about leaving the bunker. It's a real good gig here. Almost as good as we had it back in the vault. Ain't that the truth? Reclamation Day and all that vault tech bullshit they fed us? Jesus. They might as well have sent us off to the slaughter. I gotta give Captain Reynolds credit, though. Damn. He was smart teaming up with those vault security guys. The airport was a pretty sweet gig. Heard about that. So why'd you leave and end up here? <laughs> well, kind of a long story. But Reynolds was setting up his own little score. He'd have us collect all kinds of supplies from places he knew of before the war. And we'd give some over to the vault guys. But we'd keep the rest. Bet he was thinking he'd set us up in our own little group and be able to live off the spoils. Oh, really? He heard of a rumor about some really cherry leftover responder supplies in Flatwoods and got us all together to get them. If it was as good as we thought, we'd be set to make Flatwoods our new home. So, what happened, man? Uh, the captain got us down there even managed to bring along one of the vault babes for some company. Don't even remember her name, but man, she was fun for a while. Sounds like a good time. <laughs> it was, until the scorched hit us. Didn't even see them coming, and they killed Teddy and Brian before we could get organized. Shit, we were pinned in that damn church for hours. Thought we were all going to die <laughs> so what'd you do we didn't do shit ammo was running out and we thought we were totally fucked then we hear all this firing from outside in about five minutes it was over Reynolds looked out the window and all the scorch were dead she, he yells back up to us uh, to get up front and we're all looking out the window when this figure comes out of the building across the street wearing a full set of military armor and some kind of mask. Totally creepy looking. When we hear this person yell out, You, in the church, come out slowly and identify yourselves. So, what else are we going to do? We all filed out, not nearly knowing what to expect, but hey, we weren't shot on sight, so that was something. So this soldier, or whatever, walks up to us, stopping about ten feet away, and starts looking us over. That's when we noticed a couple of other people standing in the doorways of the buildings lining the street, all dressed in the same armor. Then it reaches up and takes off its mask, and we all just about fell down. Sure as shit, it was a little girl. I mean, young woman. Not only that, but we all knew her. It was Valeria from the vault. That's how you met the colonel? Well, yeah. After leaving the vault, I think Reynolds was about to say something smart when something about her look just shut him down pretty quick. She introduced herself told us that we'd been saved by the Enclave and gave us a choice to join them. Well, none of us had heard of this Enclave before, but from what she described, it sounded a lot better than, you know, hanging around there or even heading back to the airport. She gave us ten minutes to get our things together and her team would take us back to their base of operations. <laughs> and shit, man. I had a chat with Reynolds about that other girl. It really wouldn't have looked good if they found her. Wasteland justice and all. what did he say? That he'd taken care of it and not to worry. So, I didn't. A shame. But hey, shit happens, right? 
At first, we thought it was funny to see the colonel bossing people around. I mean, she gave orders, and she never had to ask twice. I ain't proud of this, but maybe a few of us thought we could take advantage of the situation. I mean, how do you take a little girl like that seriously, right? Later, Reynolds told me that he once heard of the scariest thing in the world is a child with a machine gun. Nah, he said, the scariest thing around is that girl with a machine gun. Guess one of our guys got a little fresh with the colonel and tried to tell her off. The colonel made him pick up his own teeth off the ground after she knocked a dozen out with her rifle butt. Then we watched her take down a whole group of Scorched on her own without getting a scratch. I've heard the stories. They're all true. Let me tell you. By the time we got here, not a single one of us would have crossed her. And hell, she's as cast iron of a bitch as an officer I knew back before the war. And don't even get me started on the major. <laughs> yeah, the freak. Shh, fuck, man. Don't ever say that around here. Thomas is still in the medical bay after his last run-in with her. Sorry. Just, just be careful. You have no idea. I'll gladly pull my field time, but God forbid I can get on that team. It's a good gig here, and the colonel's got things moving, and I'll take three squares and a shower over the rest of the shit out there any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Attention, operational assignments briefing in 15 minutes. Staff report to the command wing immediately. Well, uh, that's my cue. Can fill any last orders real quick, because I know you don't come here for my good looks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here's what the team lead needs. Looks like uh, 150 plasma cartridges, 10 stem packs, 5 frag grenades, and 1 week's worth of rations. Alright, we're a little short on cartridges at the moment, so you'll only get 100 until they can iron out some of the... Production shortages. I'll have one of the Protectrons bring everything over to the uh, operations wing in an hour. Damn. Okay. I'll let the captain know. See you out in the field, Leroy. Thanks, man. Here's hoping I don't get my ass shot off. Lieutenant Colonel Valeria is beginning to put the chess pieces on the board, and she and Modus have plans for Appalachia. However, those first steps are fraught with peril, and dedication to the mission can't always prepare one for the dangers of the wasteland. The monsters out there play by their own set of rules, and it remains to be seen if the new enclave can beat them at their own game. Thank you again, members, for joining us here on The Modus Files. If you've enjoyed this content, please subscribe, and better yet, please leave a review to help others find our little enclave. I'd also like to thank our growing cast, Brad Williams as the voice of Modus, Mandy Marie B. as Lieutenant Colonel Valeria, Lucy Middleton as Major Lilith, XO one King as Sergeant Stein, Aaron McNamara as Dr. Harefield, and introducing Aaron Foster as Operative Joseph, and Captain Macklin as Corporal Leroy. We'd also like to thank the Mr. Jones Show for providing our podcast cover art. You can find them on Twitter at Flanken Media. And a shout out to the Apocalyptic Aristocracy Discord, home to a great group of fellow creators, the Robots Radio podcast community, and the rest of the Robots Radio Rocket Club. And Jeremiah Johnson, our favorite character artist, who provided the wonderful character artwork you can find on our website. And lastly, thank you to all of our subscribers and supporters. God bless the Enclave, and God bless America. Members, we look forward to your next visit to our little Enclave.